Uh, good morning, uh, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, once again, uh, it's nice to see you um, on a Sunday morning. And it is a joy to see you. And I want to thank you for coming and uh, week after week and coming and listening the word of God. And I pray that this word will touch you and transform you. As um, you know, we set our uh, teaching on humility last week and I received such a good response because I was a bit concerned that this is a very um, serious subject and I did not want any of you to get condemned or hurt. But I certainly want those who are being feeling comfortable to be stirred up so that they will be able to achieve uh, more and more uh, like Christ in their life. In every day of your life, you have to become like Christ. That's the only aim we set out this journey and we are teaching on this uh, subject of humility. And I pray that uh, as you listen to these messages, you will prepare your heart and check inside of your heart. Is there any area in which you need to change? Ask God and the Holy Spirit will help you as you have more light upon you so that you can change more and more. Uh, recently when I was uh, visiting somebody's home and there was a television program which was going on the uh, in their television it is the secret millionaire program I don't know how many of you watch this uh, I think this is the uh, US version which was going in the UK uh, in this uh, episode for about uh, 40 minutes or something which I watched uh, it's a one hour episode so I watched uh, for this episode this is one of the a largest food chain company, a CEO, and he comes down uh, in his uh, 58 years of, uh, old, and he is a multi-millionaire, uh, having hundreds of millions of uh, dollars, established a, a worldwide um, a food chain of restaurants, and he's employing over hundreds of thousands of people, and uh, he goes down as a a uh, trainee who's a jobless character who's looking for a job to uh, do some counter job. So um, as he bids farewell to his house and his wife is asking, are you sure, do you want to do this? Um, are you sure, can you survive this, you know, going and staying and working? Um, because they are used to a certain amount of comforts. Now they have, he has to forsake everything. He has got uh, three or four uh, grown-up children and uh, five or six uh, uh, grandchildren. And he rides in a limousine or he has his own uh, chopper to fly around to his headquarters and his home. He travels every day by the aircraft and then, you know, his own aircraft and his own chopper to go to work and come back and he has to forego everything and then he is going to uh, for a month he is going to work in various stores as a trainee and looking for a job so he goes on to uh, do the things and he has to stay in a hotel and then he has to uh, take a bus or a taxi to his workplace and then there he has to go work in the counter and he has no clue what is happening and he has to work on it and uh, he does this for uh, four weeks and then he comes back and then he calls all these employees wherever he went and worked. He finds very interesting information to improve his business at the same time how this business can work under social responsibility to improve the society. So when he comes down uh, to his headquarters and then they call all these employees wherever he has worked and he has chose these are the people who he wants to recognize and then uh, when the time comes uh, he calls these employees into the they think they have come to uh, select something or vote for some best employer or something like that they have come to their headquarters and then the first thing when they come walk into this room they look at this uh, CEO they go wow is that you you know we didn't see you you know you were he was having a beard or uh, some kind of a thing but now they see him and they are astonished to see him he is the CEO uh, in the episode, he talks about how difficult for him to adjust to that life. Okay? 
hold this thought because we are all used to have certain amount of comfort and certain amount of uh, uh, thing but we to live like somebody um, a CEO is living like a worker for four weeks it's a tremendous amount of job and his family joins together and then wishes him uh, amazingly wow you did a wonderful job uh, it's so good of you you have done it so well all the other headquarters employees they all stand and clapping and uh, praising him and everything just for a moment uh, come to Philippians chapter 2 because we are talking about the subject of um, you know humility and I want you to uh, look at uh, how uh, Jesus uh, left everything and he came. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, um, uh, let me read from verse 1. Uh, the first few verses, that will be our closing message in the last uh, message on this series. Um, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, if you have any of these things, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Jesus, being a God, he put aside his divinity and coming down in the form of a man like you and me. Think for a moment. Jesus, the God who created the heaven and earth, the God who spoke and everything came into existence, the God who holds everything together, the omnipotent God, he is almighty, he is such a powerful God and he is omniscient God, he is present everywhere, he is there, his presence fills the whole universe, the 400 billion galaxies of stars and everything, it fills the whole place and that God willing to come down and becoming like you and me. I um, kind of, I always ask you to imagine when you study the Bible, uh, as you've been in this, uh, in our church for the last few years, you must have known definitely every time when I share something, I always ask you to imagine. I did, uh, here's one of the well-known uh, preacher was telling about that Jesus is becoming uh, like a fish and then how he lived like but I would like to take an, uh, another example okay um, you have all seen the ant right the small tiny little thing they go one by one they crawl around from one of the one and just like that imagine if I ask you to tell or if God comes and asks me Abraham, will you go to be like one of the ant and be with them and live among them and tell them that I love them? Will I do it? Or if I ask you, can you be one of the ant and go and crawl like that ant and be there and tell the uh, other aunts that how much I love them will you do that just for a moment you think because as a man when you look at the ant it may take 
years together to travel from one place to another place. Whereas you can just like that, you can walk across, you can reach across so much of distance just like that in, in comparison to what ant can do. What you can do, the ant can never ever do in their lifetime. Nothing, they cannot. It's just for a comparison I'm telling you. If we as a human being cannot be, we cannot fathom with our mind that we becoming like an ant, being inside the ant, being one of the ant and being with them and living as an ant, we just can't even imagine for with our um, finite mind. We, it, 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 we can never comprehend how it, that is possible. It's impossible to be uh, like the ant and live inside the ant. I, I, I just can't think of that. But look at God, uh, as you see, uh, the John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And you know, in Genesis 1, 1, the earth was empty and void and darkness, then God spoke the Word. And Jesus is the one who created whatever you see, what you don't see. The 400 billion galaxies and the stars and the moon and the sun, uh, the earth, the ocean, the mountain, the things. You know, you read the Job, the book of Job from chapter 38 to 41. God comes down and asks a series of questions with uh, Job. Where were you when I put the foundation of the earth? Where were you when uh, I created the sun? When, where were you when you, you know, the, the series of questions. I, I would encourage you to go home and read this. Uh, you know three chapters and you will find that you know where is the snow where is the storehouse of snow where is this one comes from where is that one comes from that everything it has come from God and it came into existence such a God is becoming a man like you and me I'm in London I want to go to US or I want to go to India or I want to go to Sri Lanka or I want to go to Middle East I have to take a plane and I have to travel and I go, whereas God don't have to travel. He is there everywhere. That God is going to limit himself and come as a man. Just for a moment you think. You know in Colossians chapter 1, if you turn a few pages from Philippians, you will come to Colossians. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, it says, for by him, that is bar by Christ, all things were created and that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Everything is created by Christ and it is created for Christ. And verse 17 goes on to say, And he is before all things and in Christ all things consist. Everything holds together in Christ. Such a God is saying yes to the Father. Father, I am willing to go down and born of a woman and I will go through and I will live as a human and I will put aside all my divine power. I put it aside and I will go and stand and I live as a normal human being. Can you see the humility that God the omnipresent God forsaking everything and coming as a normal human being. The angels, the archangels, the thundering, the lights and the throne and everyone. You see the, 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 the throne room of heaven. It's, it's the worships, angels and thou, millions and millions of angels are standing there and worshipping, singing, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Blessed be your name. That God who lives in the praises of the angels and the archangels and in the glory of glory and 
in him there is no darkness such a God is full of light and he lives there and he decides to throw everything away and he says yes I am willing to calm down and live as a normal human and I am willing to subject to the earthly parents and I am willing to be accountable to the others and I am willing to forsake the, my divinity and I am willing to be a human just to let them know father you how much you love them that's a real humility that Jesus forsaking everything and coming down and say that yes I'm willing to be a son. I'm willing to be a son of man. That's one of his title. That Jesus becoming a human. My dear brothers and sisters, I think, I think, I think hard enough to see. Will I do to be, will I take any time to be an ant? Will you become an ant to tell the ant that you love them? It's hard, right? It's it's impossible. You you won't say that. Okay, right? Maybe I will go like this. Uh, when I told you about the secret millionaire, the millionaire was willing to be a um, uh, homeless character. The millionaire was willing to show himself as a jobless character, as if he has no money and everything. But he may be able to act for certain weeks. But then when he goes back, but here Jesus did not go back to be a god. He is still a man. I'm sure this will shock many of you. But uh, if you've been in our church, and I think there is a video on the um, internet, you can watch it. It says, God, He is fully God, fully man. Jesus is a man. He subjected Himself as a man. He died as a man. He rose again as a man. And He lives even now. He lives in heaven as a man, not as a God. Yeah. He has forsaken his divinity not for four weeks, not for the 33 years which we know that he lived on the earth forever. My dear brothers and sisters, it should really, really shake you up that he is willing to give up everything. He is willing to give up his uh, divinity forever for the sake of to tell you that he loves you and me. The God who loves us, the God who created us so that you can live with him. That's what Jesus has done. That he forsook everything. You know, some of you may be thinking, no, 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 he is God. One minute, let me read some few verses so that you understand. In John chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 19 onwards. Because when uh, Jesus talks about uh, when he uh, goes and clears the temple, those who are using the temple to, uh, you know, uh, making money, he chases them out and then he said, my uh, father's house shall be called the house of prayer. And then they ask, what, under what authority you do this? Then Jesus said, uh, verse 19, you see, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple in three days I will raise it up then Jews said it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days but he was speaking of the temple of his body so Jesus was speaking about his body he was not talking about the real temple he says God will raise my body you know, when uh, John chapter 20, you see when um, after his resurrection on the eighth day, when the disciples were scared, they were uh, hiding in the room in the uh, Jerusalem and Jesus walked through the closed doors and then he speaks to them and he breathes on them. And then when uh, Thomas, he says, unless I put my hand into his hand, I won't believe that Jesus uh, looks at them in John chapter 20 verse, he says, verse 27, he says, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it on to my side do not be unbelieving but believing because jesus was raised to a glorious body but he is still as a human body uh, you know you see in acts chapter 2 when uh, peter preaches this sermon then he also says uh, in john in Ma in acts chapter 2 Verse 22, he says, Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested 
by God to you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourself also know. A man attested by God. You know, Jesus is not God. He put aside his divinity for the sake of you and me so that he can show the love of God. Uh, let me read another verse in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 5, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. There is one God, one mediator, that is none other than the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus was made like us. He dis you know, I, I just can't comprehend how the God of the universe, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, the awesome, almighty God who comes down and he comes down in the form of a man. You know, Isaiah prophesies about 700 years born, which we used to read it from Isaiah chapter 9 on Christmas. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that you will be able to recall when I say in Isaiah chapter 9, when it says, unto us a child is born very good unto us a child is born unto us a son is given so God gave his son and he came as a man you know see in uh, Hebrews chapter 1 also I will read a couple of verses in chapter 1 verse 3 uh, 2 and 3 I see yeah let me read from verse 1 itself God who at various times and various ways he spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. It's, it's one of the wonderful uh, verses you can see that God spoke through various prophets and various ways in which to communicate to us in the past times. But in the last days, what he did is he sent his son and the son who created the entire things, he chose to send his son so that his son can talk to you. Who is the son who created all things? It says, who being brightness of his glory. The Jesus is the brightness of the glory of the Father and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, in, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself who Jesus himself likewise share, shared in the same that through death he might destroy him that who had the power of the death that is devil. In verse 17, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17, therefore in all things he had to be made like his brothers. Jesus has been made like in every way like you and me. It's a very clear verse. Um, it says, and that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Because to represent God, now, to represent people to God, there has got to be a man. That man is the high priest. In the Old Testament, you know, the high priest is the one who goes uh, with a sacrifice to God, to the uh, propitiation for the sins of the people, for the forgiveness of the people. He takes the blood. First, he takes the blood for himself and then he offers that blood. And then he takes the blood of the uh, blood of the goats and the bulls for the uh, sacrifice for the people. And then he offers it and then he prays for the people. That's a high priest. The priest is the one who represents uh, the people to God. So this, uh, here it says that Jesus was made in every way like you and me so that he can be a perfect human uh, without sin and he becomes the high priest and he is uh, representing us. Okay. In uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 20, it says, 
where the forerunner, that Jesus is our forerunner, he is running before us, has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. That he, Jesus, has become the high priest and he is not the high priest just for a few days. He has become the high priest forever. Here on the earth, the high priest, they live and then they represent as a high priest and end of the term, they die. But here, Jesus is not only really, he has become a high priest and he has become the high priest forever, representing you and me to God. That's why he is able to intercede for us. As Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore he is also able to save to, the, uh, save, the, save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Finally, let me read one of these uh, from Revelation chapter 1. Now, because I'm reading so many scriptures so that this is a most misunderstood uh, theological standpoint. People think that, okay, even the Bible reading, church going, Christians think, oh, Jesus went as a man, he died as a man, but when he rose again, he rose again as a God, so he is a God. No, 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 he is a man. He can, that's why as Hebrews 4.15 says that he's been tempted in every way yet without sin so that we can, he can touch our infirmities. He can, he can feel it. He can understand what you go through so that he can help you in times of need and you will find grace in times of what you need. It says, you know, in uh, I, uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet. That is apostle John is right fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me and saying to me, do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, and the Alpha and the Omega, which is the Greek. And it says in verse 18, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen. And I have the keys of hates and death. I was a man and I died, now I am live, and I live forevermore as a man. So let me come back to the point where I started from Philippians chapter 2. What did we read in Philippians 2? We saw that he lay aside everything. He lay aside his divinity and he became a man. Let me read that again. Come to Philippians chapter 2. But made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. My dear brothers and sisters, think for a moment. It's if there is a king in our modern day time, there is a king. If you ask him to leave everything and live like a normal person, will he do that? as we are all very familiar with a lot of politicians. The politicians, they try to serve people. They become the prime minister or a president of a country. And once they come into power, what and all they do to hold on to the power? You and me know very well. We have seen, time and again, we have seen in the history that people who come to power, they hold on to the power. They do all kinds of nonsense just to hold on to the power. Here, the God, the powerful God, he leaves everything and he takes the form of a man. I just can't get over it. Think for a moment. In the Old Testament, we see in Psalm 66, we see that if I were hungry, I can take anything. Everything my hand had created. That's what God says. When Jesus became a man and he lives as a man and he walks around, he goes around and he is feeling hungry, he is tired, he wants to sleep. He is, you know, we see the, the, all his activity which is recorded in the uh, Gospels, the four Gospels records about the details of Jesus' life, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. 
you see jesus was hungry jesus was uh, uh, tired and he is weary and he is uh, um, you know he gets angry for the people using the house of god for money and he is um, he has got emotions he cries at the tomb of lazarus and uh, every possible things think for a moment there's another part i have to tell you the humility part when it comes to jesus life you all know this uh, very well known uh, recorded uh, incident which we all know by heart um, you will find in matthew chapter 3 in john 1 in mark 1 um, that jesus is coming to take baptism apostle uh, john the baptist is uh, giving the baptism jesus is coming with his disciples and there he sees um, john the baptist is baptizing people so jesus walks into uh, john the baptist and he says john baptize me so immediately jesus says uh, john uh, john the baptist says no 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 lord i need your baptism i want your baptism you are the son of god you are the sinless character so i want your baptism so it's not right for me to baptize you now just for a moment you think here john the baptist is the one who is proclaiming the kingdom of god from the old testament he is the first guy to talk about the kingdom of god he says repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then he gives up harshish words to the pharisees and the religious leaders and then he says now you know the tree is going to cut off the axe is laid on the tree um, you got to repent other you know so there are so many people who are repenting and they are coming and they are being getting baptized by john the baptist and everyone is coming here jesus is coming he start of his ministry and he is walking in and when he comes and tells that john says no 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 i know i can't baptize you you i need your baptism so immediately what would you say <laughs> well said john well done i am i'm glad you understood i am the god okay you i'm glad you understood i am the son of god so it's okay don't worry no he didn't say that he said no 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 let it be let it be filled according to the god's righteousness you baptize me you see the humility you see the the god who comes down and he lives as a man and he is willing to uh, go through the obedience that's that's a real humility you know he voluntarily put aside it's not he has been stripped away he volunteered i will go daddy i will go father i will go i will go and live as a human and i will tell them how much you love them how much i love them that i want to show them that how much we both love them so i will go down and i will live and i will set aside every power everything i set aside my divinity and i'm willing to sacrifice my life for the sake of them because i know how much you love them and i want them to show that how much i love them so i am willing to go that's a humility that he jesus is becoming man is the wonderful act of humility I tell you my dear brothers and sisters you need to realize this how much it is for god to become a man and he uh, take the form of a man and living there is a, a big act of humility because he has to go through every other thing i want you to uh, think for a moment jesus lived for 33 years for 30 years Three years he did a ministry. Three years plus he did a ministry. Thirty years he was faithful in his home, and when he was twelve years, he was uh, speaking in the temple of Jerusalem, and he spoke about the scriptures. Apart from that, we do not know anything. All we know is he was at home. He was growing in stature and wisdom in the eyes of God, in the eyes of men. So Jesus is a perfect man. He is a sinless man. the bible is very clear jesus he knew no sin so he even knew he forgot about committee he knew no sin that god has to obey to his imperfect father and mother mary and joseph while he was on the earth how difficult it would have been think 
and also he went to synagogue every week okay so he has to listen to the sermons imagine how difficult it must have for him to listen to the sermons week after week whereas it is about him but he needs to listen to all those nonsense today we find it difficult to even listen to even if the message is slightly 5 minutes more or something maybe uh, it's for my mommy to try time to close this message you will be already started looking at your watch and uh, turning this side tossing that side uh, you are talking you know it's been message has been on for too much and things like that but have this attitude as of jesus christ he set aside all his divinity he set aside all his divine power he set aside everything and he he took a form of a servant like form form of a man like a bond servant that's what the bible says so if we are going to be like christ we if we are followers of christ how much we are thinking about ourselves than others You know, one of the thing I can conclude this way, what must have made Jesus to come and live like that? Because he needs to focus on what God wanted him to do. That is why Jesus was able to uh, become like a man. His focus was on what God wants to do. But today, we are thinking about too much about ourselves than what god wants us to do i did this as a test okay uh, because i have been a, a businessman and uh, i have run a successful business and then i went on to manage large companies and a big uh, international operation with uh, offices all over the world and uh, i have lived in pride i know very well now that's why i'm teaching about humility it's not that i have achieved humility i am on the pathway to achieving humility and if you think um, that you have already been very humble that means i'm sorry to say that you are fooling yourself um we are all long way to go as we come closer and closer that we will become more and more humble and i i really thank god that i am not like what i was to be but i have changed so thank god for it and i still i'm seeing in in humbleness and in humility in meekness i'm i'm growing up um but when uh, when we go through this uh, stages of life uh, that becoming uh, humble Uh, what we need to do is how we can um, think about others or how we can think about god as i told you i took this test and not to think about me what i think what uh, god wants me to do or how i should uh, handle my uh, business or how i should handle the ministry or how i should uh, you know nothing to do with me uh, without myself i uh, guess uh, how many minutes i must have um, uh, not thinking about myself i really timed the longest was about 6 minutes yeah invariably without we ourselves realizing we are thinking about what i should do as you are listening to this you must be thinking about what you are going to do after this service what you are going to eat or what you are going to do maybe you are going to study or maybe you are going to go thinking about your work or maybe some of uh, sisters are thinking about what to cook or maybe some of you are thinking what to eat or maybe some of you are going to write exams this week as exams are starting you may be thinking about your exam you know there are so many things it's a challenge but as long as your focus is on god then only you will think less of you thinking less of you it's uh, you know humility is not uh, having a low self esteem that is foolish it's not about uh, you know i am not good at this i am not good at that i can't do anything that is not a humble statement that is a foolish statement like, yeah very is true uh, hear me very clearly if you say that i can't do anything very well i am not at this one you know if you are play the playing that kind of a track that means you are talking foolish that's not a humble statement humility is a thinking less of you and thinking more of god 
So I want to leave you with this thought. How much you are thinking about yourself? You know, God knows your thought. God knows your word. God knows your deed. The thought, word and deed, everything known to God. So how much are you thinking about God? How much are you thinking about yourself? The more and more you think about God, it automatically you will think about less of yourself. I don't want to think low of yourself, but I want to think the time about thinking about yourself should be lesser and lesser and lesser. As you think more about what a great big God we have, what God wants to do on this earth, what God is doing in your home, what God is doing in your life, what God is doing in our church, what God is doing as a whole, as a church as a whole, what God is doing in this uh, planet earth, how people can come to know God, how people can come to uh, realize the love of God. If you are going to think more and more, more and more about God, then naturally you will become lesser and lesser and lesser. I want you to become like Christ. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit's job, the Bible's only one purpose is to make you like Christ. As Romans 8, 29 very clearly says. So let's close our eyes. You know, let us think about ourselves. Just for a moment, I want you to think. As we saw in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Being God, He put aside His divinity. And he decided to come and live like you and me. I can't get this thought out of me. As I explained to you, the ant and you, you can think about yourself in any form. Will you be able to go? Will you choose to be, you know, ant cannot speak, ant cannot uh, uh, dance, ant cannot uh, eat like you, ant cannot do things, and ant cannot drive the car. You know, there are so many limitations that you will be like constrained to uh, live, which is impossible for us to live. But Jesus, the same way. But he took it all because of the humility. As we follow him, let us be become like him. And I pray, choose some area in your life that God, I want to become like you. And I want to show the humility like you. It's not about knowing the word. It's about doing the word. Could you surrender your life to God and ask God, God, I want to change. I want to be humble like you. Pray in your own words as I pass for a few seconds. Then I will pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters and to me that let us become like Jesus Christ in every day of our life. As we learn from the humility from Jesus that He being Son of God came to be live like us, O oh Lord. So we want to thank you for this ultimate act of humility. So we pray in every day of our life, we will be humble as you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and we will see you next week.